All right, so today we're taking a deep dive into microdosing psilocybin. Mm. It's definitely a topic that's generating a lot of buzz. Yeah. Especially for its potential to really impact mental wellness and to help us understand this world a little bit better. We have Dr. Andrea pennington Wasio, a trauma-trained integrative physician and psychedelic assisted therapy facilitator. So you're listening to this because you're curious about microdosing psilocybin. Yeah. It's safety, whether it actually works, and what benefits it might have. Right. And that's what we're going to be going deep on today. Awesome. But before we get into all of that, yeah, I think it's pretty amazing that psilocybin mushrooms, uh. these aren't new. No, not at all. This isn't a new thing. Not at all. This goes way back. Yeah, thousands of years. Right. We're talking ancient Mayan and Mazatec civilizations using psilocybin mushrooms. And we know that because we've got the cave drawings and all kinds of other evidence that points to this very, very long history. And that's just wild to me. I mean, just the fact that for thousands of years, mm -hmm. this has been something that people have been working with, have been using. Yeah. It's fascinating. It is really cool. Okay, so for anyone just tuning in, let's start with some basics. So psilocybin is a psychedelic compound, and you find it in certain mushrooms. Okay. And when we ingest it, our body breaks it down into psilocin. Okay. And that's what interacts with our brain's serotonin receptors. Uh -huh. And we all know how important serotonin is to our mood and how we feel. So is it kind of like psilocybin gives those happy chemicals a little boost? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And there's this one subtype of serotonin receptors called 5-HT2A that psilocin really likes to connect with. And those receptors are involved in mood yeah. perception, how we think. Okay. It's really interesting stuff. So affecting things on multiple levels. Yes. Now, I know you're probably excited to hear about all the cool things it does and the benefits <laughs> and all of that. But we've got to address the safety piece here. Because it's not for everyone. Right. Safety first. Absolutely. So who should not be using psilocybin? Yeah. So if you have uncontrolled hypertension or angina, okay. that's a no-no. A history of schizophrenia, mm -hmm. bipolar disorder, other psychotic disorders, it's really important to avoid psilocybin in those cases. So kind of like anything else. Yeah. If you're going to try a new supplement or anything, you would check with your doctor. Please do. Before doing it. <laughs> yes. This is really, really important with psilocybin because it can interact with some medications, especially antidepressants like SSRIs, MAOIs, or lithium. Hmm. That could lead to something called serotonin syndrome. And that's not good. Not good at all. Yeah. So it's like mixing medications without checking with your doctor or pharmacist. Big no-no. So now you're listening to this because you're curious about microdosing psilocybin for menopause. So can you tell us what exactly is microdosing and why is it gaining so much traction? for women who are in this stage of life. Microdosing is fascinating. We're talking about taking a sub-hallucinogenic dose of psilocybin. Okay. So tiny that you won't experience a psychedelic trip. Oh, interesting. It's about making these subtle shifts that can have a huge impact on your day-to-day -day life. Subtle but mighty. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? The anecdotal evidence, especially from women going through menopause, is really promising. We're seeing improvements in mood, better focus, and even some women finding relief from hot flashes. It's not about chasing a high here. Mm -hmm. It's about restoring your body's natural equilibrium. It's like microdosing is giving your brain a little extra support during a time when your hormones are like, Woo -hoo, what are we doing? Exactly. It's about working with your body and not against it. I like that. And there's this concept of neuroplasticity where psilocybin might actually encourage growth and rewiring of the neural connections in the brain. So it's not just a mood booster. Yeah. It might actually help your brain right. work better. Yeah, work better over time. And while the research specifically on microdosing for menopause is still pretty new, the potential is definitely there. It's like giving your brain a workout. Yes. Love it. It's like your brain is forming all these new pathways and connections, and psilocybin can help those pathways to be more adaptable and efficient. It's like a brain upgrade. Yes. So I'm hearing more and more women talk about microdosing for menopause. Yeah. What are some of the specific challenges that women in this demographic face Okay. that microdosing might be able to help with? It's a time of huge change for women. Physically, emotionally, hormones are fluctuating. You've got your hot flashes, the sleep disturbances, the mood swings, brain fog. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. And every woman's experience is different. Right. But so many women are looking for natural ways to manage these changes that are happening in their bodies and minds. And that's where microdosing psilocybin could maybe come in. 
Exactly. Because remember those serotonin receptors? Yeah. They play a part in all of this, in our mood, our right. sleep, even those hot flashes. Uh -huh. So microdosing could be a really gentle way to kind of bring those systems back into balance. It's fascinating how it's all connected like that. It really is. And on top of all of that, you've got women in midlife. They're often juggling so many things, careers, families, aging parents. Oh, yeah. It's like... They're on call 247. It's a lot. It is. And yeah. that's another area where microdosing might be able to provide support. Some women say they feel calmer, more focused. Wow. More resilient even when they're dealing with stress. So it's not about pretending the stress isn't there. Yeah. But having the ability to kind of go with the flow. Yeah, it's like finding your inner Zen master. I love that. <laughs> but let's be real for a second. When we're talking about something like microdosing, that's still pretty new. Yeah. Figuring out the right way to do it can feel really overwhelming. It can. It's very individual. There's no magic formula. It, uh, it's about really paying attention to your body and finding what works for you. So where do you even begin? Okay. How do you figure out the right dose? How often you should be doing it? It's a lot of experimentation and really careful observation. There are some common protocols. The Fadiman protocol, for example, that's where you microdose every third day. Okay. You give your system a break so you can notice those subtle effects. So it's more of a gentle approach. Yeah. What about if somebody wanted to microdose a little more frequently? Then we might talk about the Stamets stack, which is a daily approach that combines psilocybin with lion's mane mushroom and niacin. What's lion's mane? Lion's mane is known for its cognitive benefits. Some people believe that it actually enhances the effects of the psilocybin. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really interesting. So you've got options, but the key is no matter what approach you're trying, start low, go slow, pay attention to how you feel. Your body will tell you. Yes, exactly. It's yeah. about finding that sweet spot where you feel the benefits without having any unwanted side effects. Now, you've mentioned side effects a few times. Yeah. Even with microdosing, there's still a chance that something could happen. There is... While it's generally considered safe, there are some people who experience some mild side effects, things like headaches, nausea, or maybe feeling a little bit more anxious than usual. And that's a sign to adjust the dose or maybe how often you're microdosing. Your body's saying, let's pump the brakes a little bit here. Exactly. So microdosing can be a really powerful tool, but it's not a cure-all. It really works best when it's part of a bigger picture. So it's not the whole picture. No, it's one piece of the puzzle. One tool in the toolbox. Yes. Box. It's all about... Combining it with things like mindfulness meditation, eating nourishing foods. That's your mood. Yes. Movement, yeah. sleep, prioritizing those things. Like weaving it all together. Yes. Creating this tapestry of well-being. I love that. And remember, it's always a good idea to talk to your doctor or a healthcare provider who knows about psychedelics, mm -hmm. especially if you've got any health conditions or if you're taking other medications. Safety first. So let's mm -hmm. say someone's listening to all of this and they're like, okay, this sounds amazing. I want to try this. Yeah. Where do I even begin? It's not like you can run to the store and right. sum up. Not quite yet. But yet. It all comes down to the legal landscape, which is different everywhere. Right. Some places have decriminalized psilocybin. Okay. Other areas are still, you know, figuring things out. Mm. So rule number one. Yes. Know the laws. Absolutely. Where you live. 100%. <laughs> because no deep dive is worth getting in trouble with the law. Exactly. So once you know that you're in the clear legally, uh -huh. then you want to be really careful about sourcing. Look for reputable sources, whether that's online or maybe there are specialized shops where you are. Tr transparency is key. So do your research. Yes. Rock reviews. Look for lab testing results. Yeah. Make sure you're confident in the quality of what you're taking. Because it's kind of like anything else. Well, right. Like if you were going to buy a new supplement. You'd want to know. Exactly. Like, you want to know where it's coming from. Ex For sure. Okay, so we know where to get hypothetically. Yes. Let's talk dosage because you keep saying microdose. Right. How much are we actually talking about? We're talking teeny tiny amounts. Okay. Fractions of a gram. Yeah. Usually between 0.1 to 0.3 grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms. Okay. And having an accurate scale is really important. A sensitive digital scale to make sure you're measuring those doses out precisely. Okay, so tiny doses measured precisely. Yes. Got it. Now, how often do you do this? Again, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Right. We talked about the Fadiman protocol, which is microdosing every third day. Okay. Gives your body a break. And then there's the Stamet stack, which is more of a daily thing. Right. It's like choosing a workout schedule. Yeah. you got to find what works for your... What works for you. Your body and your lifestyle. Exactly. And I can't emphasize this enough. Start low, go slow, pay attention to how you feel. The body will tell you. It will. 
<laughs> it's about finding that sweet spot where you get the benefits and avoid any unwanted side effects. Now, speaking of side effects, even though we're talking about microdosing, right? 